Okay, welcome everybody. Today we're going to start a new series where I continue exploring the programming language Rust. I'm actually going to take a break from what I was working on, which was a, a command line program that could interpret and, and render astronomy data. Um, but I'm, I'm going to continue working on that. I'm just thinking about the parser and I'm going to approach that differently. I've been building more Rust code, so I've been working on some cryptography, which I know nothing about. And so that's something that I've been learning uh, more and more about, which I'm enjoying. Uh, and, um, and so that's also been sort of testing my, my Rust programming skills as well. Uh, but today what we're going to do is start looking at a ray tracer. And so I've always wanted to understand and build my own ray tracer. And so I found through some other YouTube channels that do Rust uh, a really good tutorial called Ray Tracing in One Weekend. And it's a pretty straightforward sort of tutorial broken into about 12 parts in C++ uh, on how to sort of go about starting to build a, a very straightforward, very simple, but quite general ray tracer. And so I'm going to do that. Um, and I'm going to, instead of doing it at a weekend, I'm going to build this over the next six days. So I figure that, you know, with 12 kind of main, you know, sections to the, to the tutorial, if I do uh, two every one day uh, or so until, what is it, Tuesday in, in Australia at the moment, until Sunday, that'll give me enough time to, uh, to probably build something. And I'm, I'm sort of thinking, looking at the code and, and the, the content here, that something like one to two hours a day would be plenty for me to be able to, uh, to build something useful. And then actually, if you look at what you get to, it's quite beautiful. They, um, you end up building something that can render this scene. And so, you know, it's, it's rendering some spheres and it's, uh, it's got shadows and reflections. It even uses different material types, which is really cool. Uh, and I know nothing about this stuff. Uh, and so, uh, so it's perfect. And I'm, I'm going to start going to start doing that. I've created a GitHub repo as well, and uh, this is in uh, my Snarky Boojum GitHub account under Ray Tracer, and it links off to the tutorial. So if you want to follow along and you want to make all the mistakes that I make, or probably less, then please do. Um, you know, you should be able to keep up. This is you know an hour a day, uh, and so it should be pretty straightforward to do this. Uh, if you want to know how to get Rust set up on a Windows environment. Um, go and have a look at some of my previous videos, and there's plenty of other tutorials out there. So if you look at this uh, this this tutorial, um, the first part is just an overview, and it kind of just covers the motivation for the tutorial and um, and some of the some of the outcomes. The next bit is where you start building something, and it's really it's a very simple, gent gentle introduction. Uh, it shows you how to build what's called a PPM file, which I didn't know anything about. Um, it's a, a textual representation of an image. And in this case, they give you, uh, give you some sample C++ code that gets started. And it renders this kind of beautiful rainbow graduated looking image here. So I've done a really naive, straightforward translation from C++ into Rust. And, uh, and, and I've, I've got that here. So um, this is my main program. Um, you can see I set the width and the height. So this is in pixels, 200 by 100 pixels. And then I set a maximum value for the pixel value, which is 255, and I pass that to write PPM. And then inside of write PPM, it just loops through the, the height and the width and generates this kind of graduated image and prints it to stand it out in terms of this kind of like triplet, right? So it prints out the, the red, the green, and the blue RGB values. Um, and if you look at what it does, we might as well run it. So we can do cargo run. It'll print out a whole bunch of textual data isn't very useful. Well, it doesn't make much sense to us. But if we look at the first part, uh, you can see that it's got some metadata at the top. Uh, in fact, what I've done is I've always or already run this and just redirected standard out to a file, uh, in this case, in the data directory called out.ppm. And so this is the, the full file. So you, as you'd expect, there's 20,000 lines of of data in here, so 200 by 100, of course. The first three are kind of metadata about the file. P3 is like this magic value that I think tells anything that's trying to render this, that it's a very standard PPM file. And then it has the width and the height in, in pixels, uh, and then the maximum pixel value, which is 255. So each channel, RGB, can have 256 uh, values, or 8-bit channels. So, um, so you've got 24 bits of color information in the image. There's no alpha here, so it's just 24-bit RGB. Now, um, so I've, I've got that working. That's all really straightforward. 
Um, what I've also started to do is kind of preempt the next section, which is building a vector vector three class or vec three class. And the vec three class is used to represent a, a few things. Apparently, it's used to represent colors, which is a bit strange, but that's fine. I mean, it's it's a it's basically a triplet or a three tuple, uh, and it's uh, and and so colors are RGB, so that makes sense. And it's also going to represent space, spatial coordinates. Uh, X, Y, and Z um, in three dimensions, and so that's going to be a kind of a workhorse, I, I assume, of the um, of the ray tracer. Uh, and so what I've done is I've actually created a module called Vec3. Uh, it, it's not implemented. I've got a struct Vec3, and I'm implementing Vec3. I've got a constructor here, uh, which does nothing. The only thing I've got in the struct at the, struct at the moment is is this thing uh, is a, a three element array called E, which is um, an array of, of three 32-bit um, floating point numbers. I'm using 32-bit floating point. I think that's what they use here. There's going to be probably rounding errors and all sorts of things happening with maths here, but whatever. We'll work it out. Uh, and uh, and then I in, inside my, my main program, I, I import that using modvec3, so that pulls the module source code in. Then I use it this way, which means that I can kind of implement or um, declare things this way. So vec3 new. And, and if you look at the next section, we're, we're not going to do this today. We'll do this in the next video. But this is going to basically build up a vec3 class and then a whole bunch of operations on that. So things like um, uh, what's going to do? Return the, the members like x, y, and z and rgb, which is kind of weird. That's overloading a whole bunch of stuff, but whatever. Uh, that's really interesting. Anyway, um, and then it's going to overload operators. So addition, subtraction, um, indexing, a whole bunch of stuff, uh, incrementing and what have you. Um, then it's got some member functions or methods like length and squared length uh, and making a unit vector, I guess, which, which is length one. Uh, and anyway, and then there's a whole bunch of other operations like uh, yeah, anyway, we'll go through all this. I, I haven't looked at it in detail, but it looks like, what is this doing? Yeah, so, okay, so vector, simple vector vector maths. So remember back to your, your, your high school linear algebra or first year linear algebra, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, and, then, and then you can use it. So in the next video, we'll, we'll go and build this. Uh, and then we start getting into some of those sort of graphics theory in section four. So this is cool. So implementing array class, uh, that has an origin and a direction and I don't know what this is projecting it or something I have no idea what this does a color a color function yeah anyway so you, you get the you get the idea so this will be a bit of fun um, and uh, and I'll update all of my code into into github in fact you know let what let's why don't why don't we um, why don't we just start implementing the constructor so all it does is take three floats. So I'll, I'll keep the same conventions here and I'll do um, E0, e, uh, E1, E2. Um, and then what does it need to do? Just set that. So it'll be something like, uh, uh, whoops, it'll be something like this, I guess. Oh, hang on a second. Needs to return. <laughs> needs to return a vector. Um, so that'll be a, a vec3 that it returns. Uh, and then what will it need to do? So we'll need to create a vec3. And the vec3 will have, I guess we'll just set like this, I presume. So e0, e1, and e2. Um, and so this should just create the vector and return it for us. Uh, and then that means in here we can we can actually use that. So we should let's do one, um, two, and six for one of a better. So one, two, and six, whatever those coordinates will mean. Okay. Um, and then what we can also do just for fun. So it looks like what does this do? Turns a pointer plus equals. So it looks like this is going to add the vector together. 
And so we could probably do something in Rust where we actually overload the, the addition operator. Um, and I think in Rust you can do that. Um, I was looking this up before, but it's, uh, it's, I think these are traits that are defined in standard ops. So I think it's something like this. I think. Um, anyway, let's have a go. And then we'll need to implement. I think it's the. I think it's the add trait. So uh, yep, add. And then I think it needs to take uh, self and some right hand side type. So um, so the right hand side type should be a vec three. Um, but we're implementing this for vec three. Hang on a second. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, let's see. What is? Let's see. <laughs> let's see what it needs. Output and and. Right. So um, so let out. Oh no. It'll be type output is um, vec three. Oop, vec three. And then we also need an addition operator. Um, oh. Self. Oh, we can just do that, can we? Cool. Do that. So uh, we will need a, a an add function, um, which will take self, and then it will have to take something um, right hand side. So I guess this will be the same type, probably. No, is it? I don't know. I don't know how this should work. Anyway, let's let's just call it vec3, um, and then it should return a vec3. Something like this, anyway. Uh, but that, sh I think that's something close to being right. Uh, and then in here we'll have vec3, um, And then what we'll need to do is build up E. So E will be, um, I guess, self dot E one uh, zero plus, um, you know, right hand side dot E zero. Um, and then self E one plus right hand side E1 uh, and then something like this but that doesn't look right either it's complaining bitterly what's it complaining about missing field something something Hmm. There was an example. Where was that example? No such field. Oh, God. That would help, wouldn't it? Okay. Uh, I missed my, my pretty printer. <laughs> anyway. So you get the idea. So so anyway, this should return a vector where we've just summed up all the elements, um, I think. And so I guess what we could do is we could just do, um, let's create another one. Um, we'll make this two, six, and eight. And then we should just be able to do something like let v3 equal v plus v1. Uh, and then um, let's see. Can I? What if I can just derive debug or something? Anyway, let's just see what happens if I try and print it. So, print line um, added vec one and vec two to give us this. And then we'll give, actually, 
make this VEC one. Okay, this won't be able to. Doesn't implement. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let's do this. No, because it doesn't implement debug. Add derived debug. Sure, we'll do that. Which I think is just required here. Um, cool. So let's see what happens then. Cargo run. Uh huh. So 3, 8, and 14. All right, cool. So that works. Um, so we've just overloaded the, the add operator um, for our VEC3 struct. Anyway, so we'll, we'll go through and we'll sort of do that, and I'll do a little bit more research ahead of time because I've never over, overridden um, default uh, operations like that or operators like that. Uh, and we'll build up our VEC class, and we'll have that. That'll be the workhorse, and then we'll, we'll implement the ray class um, and start, start, we'll build this image by the end of the next video. Anyway, um, so that's the idea, right? So it should be a bit of fun. Uh, and um, please join me and, and sort of, if you want to learn as, as, as I'm going to, then just look at my GitHub repository. And uh, again, um, I'd love feedback from people that have done this before or even, even newbies like me. Uh, as you're going, I'd love anything that you have that's constructive that you want to see or that you want me to change or improve. I learn a lot by, by listening to feedback and, and comments. So that's, that's been great in previous videos. Uh, anyway, excited to sort of see where this goes and uh, see you in the next video. Cheers.